Hello everybody and welcome to a preview of Frostpunk, my name is Mr. Wooden Sheep and today we're looking at a city builder slash survival game that is brought to us by the devs who uh, made this war of mine. So far I'm really enjoying this because the thing that kind of sets it apart from other city builders is you get kind of attached to your people, you're a lot closer to them because there's only 80 of them at the start and you have to make a lot of really difficult decisions to try to keep them alive. And uh, it's it's quite original and cool. I'm really liking it so far. All right, so you can see that you start off in this kind of frozen wasteland. Basically, your people were part of a convoy that were traversing to the frozen north, and uh, they got separated from their other people. And they found this little generator, and this is where they're going to start the settlement. So the first thing we need to do is find some resources. Uh, and you can see here, this one is wood. I'm looking for coal at the moment because that is basically the most precious resource, <laughs> uh, as you'll see in a second. Let me just zoom out here, so you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, and if I hold ALT, then I can see all the resource patches. And this one is coal, so I'm going to assign a maximum of 15 workers to the patch, and they're going to start making their way over. And you can see the way they traverse through the snow is actually very cool, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. It's a really, uh, I don't know, it's so satisfying, it's, it's a really nice detail that they kind of go through the patch. Sometimes they don't follow the trail back though, and they just kind of trudge through the snow again, which is a little bit stupid. Alright, so uh, you can see here in the bottom left corner, this is our objective. So right now we have 100 coal, we want to get to 200, so I'm going to just max this out over here. So we can do this as fast as possible. Alright, so you can see here, this is a period, this is uh, when people basically have a need. And I uh, want to ask you something. So this person, no roof over our heads. Certain people are understandably concerned about the lack of shelter. Understandably? I don't know about that. They're falling ill from sleeping outside in this terrible cold. We better do something about it. I'll provide some shelter so I can make a promise where you'll have two days to provide shelter for 40 people. Or I can make a bigger promise you'll have two days to provide shelter for 80 people, which is my entire settlement. I won't address this right now. Um, so this one, discontent will rise slightly. I'm not entirely sure what happens if you don't meet the requirements like maybe if I make a huge promise but then fail to get to it they will be more discontent but maybe they'll be more happy if I do achieve it I'm not quite sure because I haven't played the game that much I've just got a basic understanding of it uh, are you guys bringing in coal oh no it's free time right now so basically the game works is uh, there's actually a daily routine timeline so from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. they sleep 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. is their free time 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. they work and uh, 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. free time. The catch is free time. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this world, they can't really spend their own time with it because they actually use that time to construct uh, anything that is pending to be built. You can even pass a law which allows you to do an emergency shift where they work 24 hours a day. Obviously, this will increase discontent, but it kind of increases your production flow. So there's a lot of just really interesting stuff. I'm really loving it. All right, so what the generator does, you can come over here. I've got enough coal to run it, so I'm going to turn it on to steam level one. You can see it brings life to the place, it melts all the ice around here, and uh, it's created a heat zone around. So the way the cities work in this game is, uh, do I have enough? Yeah, I have enough for a tent. I'm going to build here. So you have to actually build in like a radius, like this, around the generator, because it provides warmth. And the further away you build from the generator, people will get colder. There is actually a heat vision. Let me remember how to do it. There you go. You can see the production of heat here. So this one is a very warm area, and you can see up here the... Uh, legend. This is livable. This is <laughs> if anyone in the generator is comfortable. And then you've got chili, whatever, and it, it gets worse as you go out. So that's a very interesting uh, mechanic, in my opinion. Guys, if you don't want to, if you want to make some progress, just ignore your free time for the first day, please. The first day, you don't need to have free time. So as I said earlier, in their free time, they use it for construction. So they're actually building these tents now, as you can see. Uh, each tent holds 10 citizens, and I made a promise to hold 40 people. So, let's just put two more tents. I don't have enough wood, uh, and in their free time, they do not gather resources. So, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. Alright, so as you can see, this little cross up here down here, that's because probably from uh, the lack of shelter, someone got sick outside. You can see here, it's Christopher Browett. And by the way, another thing that kind of personalizes everything. I mean, some games have done this before, but uh, like I said, it just feels very personal in this game. You can actually see their spouse here and uh, follow them, see what they're doing. The spouse is sitting outside in the cold. <laughs> That's so sad. Uh, at least he has a home. That's nice. Uh, I'm not sure why he got sick then. D dude that's sick, I know you're sick, but maybe go get some coal so your wife can actually sleep inside the tent tonight. 
Oh, oh god, this, our sick people are going up. So, uh, people that are gravely sick, you can see in brackets down there. Uh, those people are obviously in a much worse situation, much worse state. You're actually going to not be able to put them in a normal... Let me pause time so things aren't going awfully wrong. So, uh, you can build medical posts. So, uh, it treats most common ailments, as it says over there. For people who are gravely sick, you're gonna need something else. Yeah, so the gravely ill can be put into infirmaries, and that will fully heal them. But obviously that takes time to be able to build it, and resources and all that. So you can actually uh, pass laws, which will allow them to temporarily stay in the medical post. And let me show you the laws thing, actually, here. Which is also a very interesting thing. So this is a skill tree, basically. And, uh, here, this is the one I was talking about. Sustain life. Uh, we can't cure the gravely ill, but we can at least keep them alive. We won't risk dangerous amputations with radical treatment. You can indefinitely keep them in the medical bays with the other people who are not gravely ill, but unfortunately, obviously, they will not be treated, so they're just gonna stay forever, remain a burden, and they will take up beds in medical posts for people who are not gravely ill. So it's kind of a way to keep them alive until you get the infirmary, but obviously it comes at a cost. Or you can do radical treatment. <laughs> the gravely ill will be, will be treated in medical posts immediately, so you don't need an infirmary. Hope will rise slightly, which is nice. But around 30% of the gravely ill treated in medical posts will be left as amputees. Uh, and I think they have to stay in, uh, in like special care places. I'm not sure how useful they are to the community, so I'm probably not going to go for that. So you can see if I decided to pick radical treatment, I would be able to go down here to extra rations for the ill overcrowding. I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, I actually like getting this skill tree. These are all pretty interesting, by the way. You can see here for this, for example, this one. Uh, we can cook soup instead of full meals to feed more people with the same amount of raw food, but people will start to hate soup. Uh, this one is also really interesting. You add sawdust to your food to make people full, uh, but obviously discontent will rise slightly, hope will fall slightly, and some people eating sawdust meals will fall ill, understandably. Uh, you can add child labor, uh, but I like getting this, fighting arena, because there isn't really negative to it. It's just I have to build a fighting arena, but people are, can kind of have fun here and uh, let off some steam. So I like to sign this, this law, and I'm going to do it as early as possible, because you can only sign one law per day. Alright, guys, can you please get over your free time? I really, really want to start getting that call. And you can see here, once you pass the law, people actually comment on it. Good, betting on fights was the next best thing to the races. I'm itching to see a good fight, it'll be just like old times. Sometimes people will criticize you for your laws, but hey, uh, you know, not everyone can agree with you, so... Alright, at 8 a.m. they're gonna start working. Come on, guys, we need coal, we need wood! Get on it! Alright, these guys are already starting to go even before their free time. Oh, that's good. That's nice of you guys. Alright, I really wanna... We still have some slackers who are not doing anything at the moment. So I want to gather some wood. Let's look for a wood resource right here. Is there a closer one? That one's much closer. Let's go to that instead. Boom, max. I'm also gonna start gathering some steel. Go for it. So, uh, as you can see here, I don't know if you noticed, you can actually make workers grab stuff, but also engineers. But you kind of want to save your engineers for more taxing things, because workers can be used for pretty much anything. Uh, like, you know, just manual labor, grabbing stuff like this, or hunting, and things like that. Engineers need to be saved for medical posts, or workshops. Uh, so, yeah, people kind of... And I'm not, I think the assignment is completely random for who is what. Maybe you can train them later in a different way. As I said, I haven't gotten that far into the game. Uh, but we'll see. If the generator goes down, the city dies. Be mindful of coal reserves. Uh, and I'm gonna need food after that. Yeah, so this is a pretty useful uh, kind of graph over here. You can see your coal balance. And so we can see this is how much we're consuming, this is how much we're gaining. It's totally fine. If we go to food over here, though, that's a problem. We're consuming a lot more than we have, which is zero. So I'm gonna really need to start building a hunting hut at the moment. And uh, we can get straight to that actually although I really wanted my wood to make some tents for shelter but guys I'm sorry you're gonna have to stay homeless for a while you see this is this is oh god this game is so uh, kind of heartbreaking sometimes so I'm gonna need to secure food first of all uh, fighting arena is gonna have to wait guys we kind of need to eat first sorry about that uh, all right hunter's hut I'm gonna this, you can see this one actually takes up more space than a normal tent so, whatever, I'm gonna, uh, actually, I'm gonna, I want the tents to be close to each other, I'm just gonna put the hunter's hut right here. Uh, you guys are gonna have to build that in your free time later. We still need a lot of wood, though. Okay, we're gathering a lot more coal than we need, so maybe I'm actually gonna take some people off of the coal. Uh, I would like some more wood, honestly. We are kind of running low. Boom, 15 more people for the wood. 
Cool, so the hunter hut goes out at a certain amount of time. I think in the night time, anyone who's been assigned there will actually go and get some food. Right now, we need to actually assign people, though. Uh, so, I'm going to take away, let's say... F let's let's take that amount. Uh, and, boom, seven people at the hunter's hut. Maybe I, we can actually reduce that to five. Because we're going to need to save some people for the cookhouse, which I'm going to build right now. Something I like about this game, by the way. You can see I can just, like, plop this down here. And I'm going to delete it. And look at that. It leaves the indentation in the snow. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go cookhouse. Place it next to the hunter's hut. So, uh, basically, the hunter's hut is going to gain uh, one raw food per hunter. So, I'm going to be gaining five raw food per day because I have five hunters. And then they're going to bring it over here. And each raw food in the cookhouse becomes two food rations. So, uh, yeah. I should be feeding my people sufficiently, I think, for now. Which is nice. I'm wondering if I should build the fighting arena at the moment. Because right now they have no way to kind of vent and uh, have some fun. Actually, we should build a medical post because some of these people are quite sick. There you go. We're going to build that. I'm going to build one more tent so I can actually complete this objective. And people will uh, know that I keep my promises. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so if people die in your place, they're actually going to cause... They, they can spread disease to your people. So you can either build a cemetery... But then you're going to have to actually build a cemetery, which is going to cost resources. Or you can just dump them out here <laughs> in the snow where they're actually not going to decay in your place. But obviously, hope will fall, discontent will rise. Oh, I do have to dig a snow pit. Interesting. But it's probably a lot cheaper than a cemetery? Or maybe also the cemetery can, will actually take space in my circle, whereas the, the snow pit will be outside. I'm not sure. Alright, well I don't want the video to go on too long, this is just a very short preview to kind of give you an idea if you're interested in the game. So far I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, it makes you do all the tough choices, uh, and like I said, you just kind of, I don't know, it's a smaller group of people. It's only 80, it's not like a grand city. So uh, I do feel a little bit more attached to these people, and I feel kind of responsible when one of them dies or whatever. But I mean, <laughs> there's only so much I can do. It's pretty tough. Shelter promise fulfilled. Everyone feels relieved with the roof, even a flapping one over their head. Hope rises. There you go. So I got a nice little... My hope increased. That's good. But yeah, if you want to pick up the game for yourself, there is a link in the description to do so as always. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Maybe subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. I love you.